from KATU2 News, Portland, Oregon's literacy crisis, why an educator says change is needed at all levels. There's another story about how kids can't read coming out of Texas I want to take a look at on the other side of this. We don't prepare teachers adequately to be able to reach all kids. Massive change is in the works for literacy education in Oregon. For several years, less than half of third graders in Oregon have not been reading on grade level. And just for the record, the entirety of the West Coast is completely collapsing. Was it or I believe it was actually Washington that said, oh, uh, you don't have to take the bar exam anymore. Obviously, California, the whole thing is collapsing. And this is only going to make sure that that happens for generations to come. And 10 months ago, Oregon's governor created a council dedicated to researching what needs to change in Oregon's elementary schools to make sure more kids are proficient in reading and writing. Tonight, we sit down with a member of that council and discuss the top-down changes that could soon be coming. And I would be willing to bet that A, the solutions don't make any sense, or if they do, they're not going to do any of them. But it's all going to boil down to more money that will eventually be siphoned through the pockets of bureaucrats all over the place. Last school year, only 39.4% of third graders in Oregon were considered reading at grade level. It was the same last year, and it's been under 50% since at least 2014. When you see these numbers, what do you see? I see a crisis. I, feel I genuinely don't know. Is that because of, because of TikTok, iPads? When I was in school, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't even venture a guess as to how many people were able to read at or above grade level. But I feel like I made it out all right. I don't know. Crisis. Shauna's Sanao has been an elementary teacher for 22 years and is an expert at teaching our youngest students how to read. While talking to K2, she remembered walking into her first fifth grade classroom. Immediately struck with, wait a minute, I've got fifth graders who do not read. It's not just my town, it's our whole state. Right now, how a child is taught to read varies classroom to classroom. But in every school, as shown by the data, there are students being left behind. I would say... And I assume um, that this is concerning mostly private schools. Right. I highly doubt that you're going to spend an arm and a leg to put your kid in private school and they're not going to teach them how to read. Of course, they will voice, you know, graphic LGBTQ agenda driven propaganda on them. They will do that. Say there isn't any one single method. It's more like a choose your own adventure or for the teachers. For right the now, teachers. Leading class. Yeah. And for kids, it's maybe a luck of the draw. Who is your teacher going to be? What training have they had? So now is also a member of Governor Tina Kotek's Early Literacy Educator Preparation Council. Created last year, the group is dedicated to coming up with ideas to improve how reading is taught across the state. From university classes that prepare young educators to certifying new teachers in Oregon to updating existing curriculum, Sanao says change is necessary from the bottom up. What it boils down to. Yeah, and this, I think, is pretty much proof that the entire thing is rotten. So you got some corrupt bureaucrats, some corrupt teachers union who are just, you know, bringing on teachers, and then you got teachers who are also corrupted because, as we know, the corrupt politician breed corrupt citizens and then the corrupt citizens will include corrupt teachers and the corrupt teachers will not teach the kids anything except for how to you know give a bj is we need to make sure that all teachers in the classrooms are trained and have have the disposition to believe that all students can learn trained by who though there is nobody in charge there are no adults in the room especially not in oregon to proficiently read and write and once they have that disposition to have a solid understanding of the science of reading so now explain the science of reading with these strings each representing a critical aspect of learning how to read. Word recognition skills like phonological awareness intertwined with language comprehension skills like vocabulary. Seems like she's making it a little bit too complicated, but it's like 
this is all so simple. I don't, I genuinely couldn't remember how or when I even learned to read or how it used to happen, you know, 20 years ago. But of course, when you have people destroying the most basic facts of life, man, woman, child, to say the least, those people are not going to be able to teach a very simple concept to a young kid because they're already, they're already, they've been flooded. They have been brainwashed with nonsensical ideas. And those apparently, I mean, I guess younger millennials, older Gen Zers, I don't know who's really the teachers now, but the corruption comes from the top down and every, I mean, literally everything is rotten. Inflation, the economy, illegals, kids can't read, Diddy, human trafficking. I mean, it's a complete mess from the inside out. I'm going to have to find like, I, I need to find a silver lining glass, how full something or other to break the monotony of all of this degeneracy. Critical foundational skill is oral language. So literacy, there is no reading, there is no writing if there is no oral language. All of it together creates a strong foundation for literacy, which is crucial by third grade because that's when students transition from learning to read to reading to learn. Kids who can't read and write, especially by third grade, they know. And to watch kids sink into the despair of, I can't do this thing, um, there's a huge correlation with depression and anxiety and all kinds of places where that can go. Yeah, and it seems like back in the day, you know, when I was young, and I think most people of a certain age had this, you know, where there was one or two kids in the class that couldn't read and they would get embarrassed when the teacher would call on them. Now it seems like that is most of the class, right? Same thing with the LGBTQ agenda. When you were a kid, it was like, oh, one or two kids. You're like, oh, that kid's definitely going to be gay. And then he may or may not turn out to be gay. But that, too, seems like the larger portion of the class. Everything is flipped upside down. You know, it's upside down, backwards, bizarre clown world. To stop leaving students behind, Sanao says change is vital and hopefully coming sooner rather than later. I really abide by Maya Angelou's quote, you do the best you can until you know better, and when you, when you know better, do better. We know better. Why, why aren't we doing better faster? And educators and specialists are tackling the literacy crisis facing our entire nation. Join us tomorrow morning. Yeah, I, I doubt it. I mean, there is nobody in charge. This lady seems like she's got her head on straight and she wants to fix the problem. But who are you going to take these? The the governor of Oregon, Kotech or whatever, these weirdo far leftists that could not care any less about reading, writing, arithmetic. They just want to pump you full of agenda driven nonsense. Here's one more. From Fox 26 Houston, why are children struggling to read? Since there are new concerns about this new generation of children called Gen Alpha. Gen Alpha, that's a new term. Many of them being called unfortunate. Okay, well, that makes sense, right? Because I was kind of wondering if it's millennials, maybe some Gen Xers, maybe a couple boomers still, you know, dragging their feet um, or older, whatever. Young people, the blind leading the blind out there, and now we know that Gen Alpha, I guess the the youngest, well, maybe not the youngest today, but a younger generation can't, they can't break the cycle. I guess, I guess they started the cycle of kids who can't read. Who knows? Let's see what he has to say. Fortunately, illiterate because experts say they'd rather pick up an iPad instead of a book. I said that too, but also, um, shout out to this guy. Oh, the experts, the experts say, the experts say San Francisco is collapsing. The experts say put on two masks. The experts, the experts, the experts. And that is also part of the reason why these kids can't read at all is because they're the, the people who are trying to teach them to read are following the lead of somebody who just calls themselves an expert. Oh, I'm a misinformation expert. Oh, I'm a relationship expert. No, you're not. You people are propagandists, but I'm getting triggered here. I'm figured out. According to a report, about half of Texas children read below their grade level. We have a panel of parents here to join us to discuss it. Bianca Matlock and Angela Vidal. First of all, guys, have you all seen any problems with your children who may be in this age group? Most definitely. Um, attention span, 
making sure that they stay focused, making sure that they get their chores done first or homework done first. The screen seems to be addictive for my kids, so I control that. When you say Absolutely. And that's why I have said for years now that I think we pick we peaked at the Nokia, when everybody was playing Snake, you still had to memorize some things. You didn't just have all the answers in your pocket, a supercomputer, you know, with you for every step of the way. That's when we peaked and we passed it. Hey, chores and homework, that's any badass kid. <laughs> so I'm looking for something that would stand out with what we're talking about. Maybe not up to par with their reading skills and math skills where they should be a little bit higher? No, thankfully my kids are mastering their star tests. They're, mm -hmm. they're at grade level in terms of reading and writing. It's just really more so attention. Mm -hmm. Attention. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk to them, mm -hmm. are they getting it? Do you say, look, do this, do that? Whether they stand with that. Sometimes this guy definitely has big, you know, black dad at the barbecue vibes. Late 90s TV dad vibes, you know? Sometimes they get it, sometimes they don't. And if they don't, I have to redirect or I control the Wi Fi. I can cut the Wi Fi off. That usually gets their attention. Um, <laughs> you, she, she's going to cut the Wi Fi and then she's not going to use it? I guess so. Um, but it, it's a lot of redirection. All right, Angela, your thoughts on this? Um, I think that, um, you know, personally, I haven't had an issue where I would say that academically, you know, mine are thriving academically. However, I will say that, um, you know, I do notice that I, I see a lot of children like on their phones or like with earphones on or, you know, um, little where did they find these ladies? They just picked two random women out of Houston to ask them about if their kids could read, they're basically just saying the same thing, which is what I said, that part of the problem is the iPad. AirPods in mm -hmm. their ears. And I do think that that does take away from like their social, the social aspect Bingo. of mm -hmm. things. And I think that that's where they can come off to be a little less intelligent mm -hmm. because they're not, they're not properly communicating with people because they're isolating themselves behind an iPad or behind socially awkward. Yeah. yeah, and we see a lot of that with kids. And I recently saw a documentary where it was called iPad Kids, where mm -hmm. if your kid was raised on an iPad, they just don't know how to deal with the real world and other individuals. It becomes so ex uh, unfortunately, I mean, for better or for worse, it seems like the iPad is the real world now, right? Like, I mean, do, do kids, I don't know, I don't have kids, but do they still go to school and buy a whole bunch of books and a highlighter and a calculator, or is it a little bit different now? Extreme where they're cold, they're uh, unfeeling, Absolutely. they don't know how to deal with the average person. Is that a fear for parents like you guys out there? Yeah, I mean, it's something that I personally control. Like, I, I do, I allow my kids to have headphones on if they're on their laptop and they're doing something, but I don't let my kids just walk around with headphones on um, or just be out of tune. Like, they need to be able to be social when they're in a social environment with people and not, like, remove themselves, mm -hmm. you know, because I think that's where that awkwardness can easily be mis like interpreted for like what's wrong with you or are you just not that okay well it's kind of taken a strange turn from not being able to know how to read to just being anti-social with your headphones in all the time uh, bright or are you just not talkative you know mm -hmm. um that is a, that is a little scary you know to see that this kind of is happening in our in our um, society but it is like I said it is important that as parents time the children and set very specific boundaries and, and mm -hmm. Bianca how are you setting those boundaries for your children to make sure they don't become the individuals we hear about the iPad kids who were raised and born in the year of the iPad and they that's all they know so yeah. how are you making sure your kids have the ability to be socially or as they say, a social butterfly. I hope you're good at making friends. Hey, I'm a regular social butterfly, man. Not a butterfly, but, <laughs> you know, just regular. Right. No, uh, sometimes it's just as simple as kicking them out of the house, mm -hmm. making them go outside, mm -hmm. making them play with their friends. Can't do that in Oakland or New York, where they're going to walk around the South Bronx or East Oakland with all the abandoned cars. 
and criminals and stray bullets. Can't do that in those cities. Uh, making sure that they go to social things, you know, making sure they're active in school. Um, so that way they're not stuck behind a screen, always looking at the internet or looking at TikTok. Um, they can have communication skills when they get older. So that's what I try to do. And do you guys blame parents who say, look, I got them quiet in the corner. They're on their iPad. Let me do my thing while they're on that iPad. Some parents, some parents. I think that there's an age limit for that. Right? I think that um, once you have children that are in the preteens and the teens, I personally don't think that you need to isolate them with a device. I, want, I personally think that it's important that those children do start to socialize and understand um, you know, how important it is to be able to ho hold a conversation. I mean, it doesn't matter what day and age that we live in, social skills uh, will even predetermine how successful you can you can be, which is doesn't matter how smart you are. If you don't have the right social skills, you may not be able to close that deal. All right. Well, certainly not groundbreaking. I feel like this has been going on for many years. Way back in the day, it would have been, oh, you know, too many video games, too many movies. Now, I guess the video games have just moved on to the iP iPad. But either way, it's just... um. This is, this is like, this is one of the good old days problems. You know what I mean? It's not like the new fangle, you know, cut your junk off. It's just like, okay, uh, you know, get off the iPad and go outside. But they're obviously the regime, the establishment, the tech firms, the uppers, whatever you want to call them. They're going to continue to try to dumb everybody down so all of their crimes go unnoticed.